All right, so we finally made it. MRI video number eight. This is the last video of the series. After this video, you are going to be a complete pro at MRI questionnaires. There is not gonna be a single MRI questionnaire out there that is going to hold you back or make you think twice, right? Because we already have all the words and today I am ending this video with terms number 60 through 70. So let's get this. Tune in as Interpret Your World's co-founder, Juan Prieto, talks about the highlights of his workday as a professional medical video remote interpreter. If you are aspiring to learn something new and gain insight into what the world of medical interpretation is really like, then you've come to the right place. Follow along as Juan talks not only about his success, but the daily challenges he has to overcome to become a better interpreter each and every day. This is Unwind Sessions with Juan Prieto. Welcome back, video number eight, the last in the MRI series. Today is Tuesday, September 28, 2021, and top of the morning to you, Alejandro. This day has their name all written over it, written all over it, I'm sorry, so boom, let's get this day. This is our day, let's take it, right? Nobody's gonna give us this day, we have to take it. Okay, and uh, today I took a total of 30 sessions, three of which were uh, OPI, 30 were VRI, and uh, it was pretty good, pretty good. Um, not very hard, uh, o VRIs and the OPIs, I don't even remember what they were about. So very brief, very brief, uh, no sessions over an hour today. I have only one highlight, but before we get into the highlight, remember that we are doing those vocabulary practice videos, uh, one word per video, English, and then one word uh, for Spanish. We're testing your vocabulary knowledge. Right now we're just doing medical vocabulary on TikTok, on Kauai, on Instagram, which we post to Facebook as well, and on Kauai. So you have uh, four platforms where you can practice your vocabulary on. Of course, we are just starting. We might only have like 10, 12 words for you to practice uh, English and Spanish back and forth, but we're gonna be doing one video on each platform every day, and if we ever have time, we're gonna fill you with videos big time. So expect that soon, probably around the, hopefully this year we can, uh, Get you a very good vocabulary practice, right? But for now, that's what we have. Uh, go ahead and take advantage of it and uh, test your skills every day, a different medical term or a different general term. Another thing that I have to let you know is that we are still accepting comments on MIP21. Why? Because when that video reaches 100 likes, we're gonna pick two comments at random. We're gonna send the people who those two comments belong to special links to MIP22, and we're gonna let them record their interpretations, send them over to us so we can give them some lovely feedback, right? You know, it's very hard to get feedback in this business, so we are going to hook you guys up. And we have 45 likes, so 55 likes, 50 more, five, 50 more likes to go. And one, um, two more things. Remember that we have a Patreon page where we're as little as just one dollar of your support. You bring me closer to quitting my day job. <laughs> well, I'll, actually, that's true. But you also help us to motivate much more content, and we give you access to everything on that page all of the medical practice videos ad free scripts answer sheets vocabulary lists and much more content and most importantly you will forever win a place inside of our heart and i'm not kidding guys um uh, every dollar that you guys give us in patreon every view every commercial that you click on 
all of that stuff goes towards the future towards creating much 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 more content and of course my biggest obstacle in giving you guys all of the con content that you need creating everything is of course my eight hours as an interpreter um but of course that is what feeds me right i cannot do anything else so anything that you guys give us is very very much appreciated and it'll pay big dividends in the end because if we can get that eight hour uh, investment of my time from interpretation and put it into interpretation education for you guys then everybody is a winner right uh one last thing do you have two years of experience in medical interpretation live in the united states mexico or costa rica and are looking for employment in vri or opi send us a mean, uh, an email to interpret your world at gmail.com uh, link in the description that way we can provide you with more information for a lovely third party company which i happen to work for all right and now we can get into the highlight so there's only one highlight a single highlight and um, um it has nothing to do with interpretation uh i guess it does but it but it does have to do with being an interpreter all right so what happens i get into the session i answer the session and the first thing first thing that i see on the screen is this very beautiful woman with a uh, face mask with a double helix on there now as soon as i see the double helix i start thinking to myself oh man this session is going to be full of technical difficulties my internet might even disconnect <laughs> if you guys don't know what i'm talking about anytime you see a double helix somewhere in a uh, office that means it's what that means is what guys that means it's and i am just um delaying this because i forgot uh it just got out of my head but i remembered it now if you see a double helix in a clinic either on the uh provider's chest or a uh, robe or anywhere on their face or on a wall if you see a double helix that means it's genetic counseling and you are in for a very tough session all right but this time I was wrong. I was wrong. I, 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 I had Lingui on my computer. I was ready to type those diseases that I've never even heard of. I was sweating. I was sweating. I was preoccupied before even taking the session. And boy was I wrong. Uh, this was in a, a session that was an hour long or just a little bit shy of an hour. And uh, the hardest vocabulary word that I had to interpret was chromosome can you believe that a whole an hour an hour in genetic counseling and the hardest word was chromosome there was also a vocabulary word there was down syndrome uh that was it that was it um where everything was explained like very very basic uh the hardest word was chromosome for example um for trisomy was not even mentioned uh, they said uh there is a problem there might be a problem with the 13th chromosome there might be a problem with the 18th chromosome and uh, uh amniocentesis was mentioned but i mean those are for me for me those are like basic basic vocabulary words that i'm sure i'm never gonna forget in my life because they're pretty basic i learned them like from day one so i will never forget them and chromosomes and down syndrome that i've learned those words before i was even a medical interpreter and amniocentesis is it sounds cool i think it sounds very cool so that's why i'll never forget it and it's the same in spanish so yeah it just goes to show you guys uh, you never know what you're gonna get i mean i was expecting a hard session i was expecting <laughs> technical difficulties you know as in oh i'm sorry ma'am uh the call is really cutting out i was not able to hear you would you mind repeating that and then she repeats her whole vocabulary and that way i have time to look it up that's a good strategy if you're bri or opi um but i didn't have to use this um the lady was nice enough to not use very hard vocabulary terms and everything went well and i was very happy so 
you never know what you're gonna get. Like, right? Forrest Gump, uh, it's a box of chocolates. Interpretation sessions are like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. All right. So that's it for my highlights today. So let's get started with the vocabulary list, which starting with number 60 today, MRI questionnaire is breast tissue expander. In Spanish is expansor de tejido mamario. And no, I thought I was missing an accent there, but I am not. All right, so what is a breast tissue expander? After your mastectomy, this is a mastectomy, mastectomy, I'm sorry. After your mastectomy, and that is a problem that I have. I forget the T on mastectomy, and I always call it mastectomy. I don't know why. Um, I should probably write that down so I don't forget. So mastectomy, um, write it down so I don't forget it because I've been forgetting it all this time. So a mastectomy is a surgery to remove your breast. You'll have a breast reconstruction surgery using a tissue expander. A tissue expander is an empty breast implant that your surgeon will fill with normal saline over about six to eight weeks until it reaches a breast size that you and your surgeon decided on. All right, so why would they do a mastectomy? breast cancer, um, um, other stuff that can go wrong with the breast, uh, infections, uh, flesh eating virus, right, on the breast. I mean, that very rarely, right? But mostly cancer or other stuff like cysts, right, or other things that can go wrong with the breast that they need to remove that breast. And uh, of course, when they remove that breast, um, well, it's just gonna be flat, right? Because they remove everything. So to make it look more aesthetically and to make it look more beautiful and like a normal um, or what we would expect from a normal women's body, um, it in I don't know why I'm comfortable in saying um, normal women's body, right? Because women can have flat chest too, right? But it's rare. So uh, I don't know how rare it is. But I mean, there's all kinds of bodies, right? But um, if you picture the body of a woman, you picture a woman with breasts. Let's just leave it at that, okay? And um, so, since it's flat, uh, they need to give it that appearance, right? Because I mean, think about it. Uh, you just had cancer and they removed your breast. I mean, you're gonna be bummed out, right? So um, they do this so the, the women, um, have that good appearance and they don't feel so bad about their appearance right so they put this on and since they just removed everything they need to expand the the tissue or well yeah all of the tissue including the skin but they just removed it i mean they just removed a big part of skin right like that much uh, so then they closed it and they need to gradually keep on pulling that tissue forward so that it can make a normal breast shape so that's what they do first is small and then they keep on putting whatever uh what is it saline uh, in it until it gets to the size that um well, the best size that the doctor and the patient have agreed upon, right? So that is a breast tissue expander. All right, number 61 is a penile implant or implante de pene. So a penile implant, penile implants, I'm sorry, are devices placed inside the penis to allow men with erectile dysfunction to get an erection. Penile implants are typically recommended recommended after other treatments for ED fail. There are two main types of penile implants, semi-rigid and inflatable. Each type of penile implant works differently and has various pros and cons. So what is a penile implant is basically something, a device that goes inside of your penis if you are having problems with erections. Um, so what does this do? This helps for your body to have an erection. How do they work? I don't know. I have no clue how do they work, but we are um, medical interpreters, right? We don't need to know how they work. We just need to know what they are and uh, the translation to the target language, right? So I'm not gonna get into how they work, um, 
but if you're Mexican and uh, if you're about my age, I'm 33, uh, there was a very, very uh, promiscuous, promiscuous, uh, I don't know if promiscuous can be used for men too, I don't know. Uh, but he was a womanizer, he, I think he still is, and he would brag about his little penile implant, he had one of those pump things, and he was old already, I'm talking about like 15 years ago, and he looked old to me, so he was probably like 50, 60, he's probably very old now, um, don't get offended if you're seeing this video and you're that old, and you're like, I'm, I don't feel old, more power to you, sorry, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't know how they work, but I mean, pfft, they definitely work. I mean, that man was bragging his penis off. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I don't remember his name. Uh, just look for like inflatable penis guy. Mexican famous. Raul something. I don't know. Um, all right. Shoot, I lost it. Pessary. All right, number 62 is a pessary. In Spanish, is a pesario. So a pessary is a prosthetic device inserted into the vagina for structural and pharmaceutical purposes. It is commonly used to treat stress urinary incontinence, to stop urinary leakage, and pelvic organ prolapse to maintain the location of organs in the pelvic region. It can also be used to administer medications locally in the vagina or as a method of contraception. Pessaries come in different shapes and sizes, so it is important that individuals be fitted for them by healthcare professionals to avoid any complications. However, there are a few instances and the circumstances that allow individuals to purchase pessaries from a store without a prescription or without seeking help from a healthcare professional. Some side effects may occur if pessaries are not sized properly or regularly maintained, but with the appropriate care, pessaries are generally safe and well tolerated. So I didn't know what a pessary was, but I don't think I've ever been in a session where they used it for all of those things. I have only been in sessions where they have used pessaries for organ prolapse. Uh, what is prolapse? It, it means that something is bulging out of somewhere. Uh, and in this case is bulging out of the vagina, right? The um, uh, the cervix is falling down, well the uterus, right? But the cervix is what you can see falling down, but the uterus is the thing that's falling down. And it falls down and it like bulges into the vagina. So this is the vagina, right? It's supposed to be empty. And then this is like the normal uterus. This is the, the cervix. So it's supposed to be like that, right? And everything is supposed to be there, happy and stuff. but. All of a sudden, this is very weak, and then this starts falling out, like, you just Google that stuff, if you don't believe me. And uh, what do they do? They're, they could do surgery, they could do, there are things that they can do to fix that, but one of the ways that they do it is they use a pessary, which a pessary, is, uh, the pessaries that I've seen on Google, they look, and the ones that I've seen on sessions, they look like donuts, and then they go and they get stuck to your cervix, and um, well, let's say it goes like around the cervix, right? And then it pushes everything in and since it's big, it holds everything in place all the way up there. And uh, yeah, I guess it makes sense, right? If it's like bigger and it's holding the stuff, it could probably press on the urethra. I don't know, I'm probably saying stupid stuff. Um, and I would imagine that's how they control um, stress urinary incontinence right but uh, I, I i mean i'm i might be saying wrong things uh, because i've never seen it done i've never been in a session that this needed to be done this is news to me but definitely for prolapse yes i've definitely been in those sessions all right let's get on to number 63 number 63 is a intrauterine device or an iud and in Spanish is dispositivo intrauterino or DIU. And if you say aparato here, uh, maybe you just don't remember dispositivo and aparato comes out, that's fine too, aparato intrauterino. But uh, dispositivo intrauterino is the preferred term. So 
An intrauterine device or an IUD is a small plastic T-shaped device used for birth control. It is inserted into the uterus where it can, where it stays to prevent pregnancy. All right. So an IUD is just basically like this little thing that looks like a T and it goes inside of the uterus to prevent, um, well, it blocks the fallopian tubes and it prevents the sperm reaching the egg or the egg reaching the sperm. It forms like a bar barrier, right? And there are, they can be made of just copper and that has no hormones or it can have hormones like I don't I don't want to lie to you guys um, uh, so I'm not gonna say what hormones but well yeah um, you guys can look it up um, but this might not be right but I'm pretty sure um, it can be progesterone or the other hormone I forgot estrogen progesterone or estrogen either one of those or both of those I don't know but look it up guys look it up if you want that information um what hormones can be used in the iud look mirena m-i-r-e-n-a that is a brand name of iud that has hormones and i'm pretty sure it has i don't remember but look it up guys uh if you want more information on that thing just know that um uh, is just a, a contraceptive device that looks like a T. It can have hormones or no hormones to prevent pregnancy. For number 64, um, it's diaphragm, diaphragma. And I had to look it up because this is a contraceptive as well. I, I just learned this today. And uh, a diaphragm in the human body is like this cavity that um, whenever whenever your lungs are full of air, it like goes down like that, like it creates like a convex shape uh, to be able to house the air, right? So this is, um, and it's right here, like it's like around where your rib cage en ends and it it's the lungs, right? It, it um, let's say whenever your lungs get big, like it like, it gets like all stuck up right and whenever your lungs get big it goes down and then it expands but that is like what is actually like pulling uh your um lungs open uh and that is what makes the air go into the lungs like it's the diaphragm the diaphragm that is actually breathing for you like it goes down and then it pulls the air in and it goes out and it pushes the air out all right so uh of course i knew that was not what it was talking about and i had to look for it and i had to go all sherlock holmes and be like all right so it's asking about iud and uh, uh diaphragm and pessary so it must be something in the vagina so i looked uh up um vaginal diaphragm and diaphragm and this is what it came out so the definition is the diaphragm is a barrier method of birth control it is moderately effective with a one-year failure rate of around 12 percent with typical use it is placed over the cervix with spermicide before sex and left in place for at least six hours after sex Fitting by a healthcare provider is generally required. Side effects are usually very few. Use may increase the risk of bacterial vaginosis and urinary tract infections. If left in vagina for more than 24 hours, toxic shock syndrome may occur. While use may decrease the risk of sexually transmitted infections, it is not very effective at doing so. There are a number of therapies types of diaphragms with different rim and spring designs they may be made from latex silicone or natural rubber they work by blocking axis to and holding spermicide near the cervix all right so that just sounds like too many steps uh you need to put it in and then <laughs> you need to put it in and then uh it needs to be in there and then after sex you need to leave it in for six hours but if you leave it in after 24 hours you may get toxic shock syndrome 
and it's only 12 percent well it has a 98 88 percent effective rate so yeah no no wonder i've never heard of it that doesn't seem all that great nothing like a condom right you just uh slip it on and even a female condom it's the same thing you just put it in there and you do it though I don't know what to call it. Um, in my mind, there was this battle. Uh, the act, and that just sounds too very impersonal. And then I thought about saying love, but then I just thought, man, that's just gonna make me sound very soft. Um, but who cares, right? Uh, whatever you call it, the act, love, rocking the kasva, it doesn't matter. We all love it, or hopefully we all love it, and there's nothing easier and a condom in my in my mind all right so that's why i had never heard of a diaphragm contraceptive number 65 radiation seeds and this is semillas radioactivas now i couldn't really find anything for radiation seeds if i had to interpret it i would have interpreted that uh, and i've had in, and i've interpreted it as semillas de radiación but i couldn't really find any information when i put semillas de radiación and whenever i put re semillas radioactivas i did so i think i'm gonna be using that term from now on so radioactive seed in plants are a form of radiation therapy for prostate cancer brachytherapy or internal radiation therapy are also terms used to describe this procedure there are types of prostate brachytherapy permanent and temporary compared to external radiation which requires five to eight weeks of daily treatments convenience is a major advantage of brachytherapy now it gives us those definitions for both types so i am going to go ahead and define them for you because i thought it was interesting so permanent low dose rate brachytherapy, brachytherapy ldr permanent a doctor or a clinician implants radioactive iodine 125 or palladium 103 seeds into the prostate gland using an ultrasound for guidance the number of seeds and where they are placed is determined by a computer generated treatment plan tailored for each patient anywhere from 40 to 100 seeds are commonly implanted the implants remain in place permanently and become biologically inert no longer useful after a period of months this technique allows a high dose of radiation to be delivered to the prostate with limited damage to surrounding tissues all right and for the other one Temporary high dose rate, brachytherapy HDR. With this technique, hollow needles or hollow catheters are placed into the prostate gland, which are then filled with radioactive material, iridium-182 or cesium-137 for five to 15 minutes. After each treatment, the radioactive material is removed. This is repeated two or three times over the next several days. After the final treatment, the catheters or needles are removed. All right, so I just thought that was very interesting. I've never had a session where I've had to interpret radiation seeds. Well, of course, an MRI questionnaire. But other than that, like a session that that was the main topic, radiation seeds, never. So I am not familiar with this. But that seems pretty cool, right? Instead of going to chemotherapy or to radiation treatment, right? Shooting lasers at you, at your uh, prostate playing uh, Battlefield or Fortnite, I don't know which one, Fortnite, I'm pretty sure that's the most popular one, uh, with your prostate. Uh, but instead of that, they can just get those radioactive seeds and implant them into your prostate, right? And that will, it's supposed to give you, um, cre uh, it's supposed to give you treatment to cure prostate cancer. So that just seems pretty cool, in my opinion uh all right number 66 and these are the easy ones uh number 66 is body piercing perforacion corporal and we all know what a body piercing is but the definition says the piercing of holes in parts of the body other than the ear in order to insert rings studs or other pieces of jewelry so 
uh, an eyebrow ring, a uh, bell navel ring, uh, butt cheek ring, whatever, wherever you want to put those uh, piercings. That's a body piercing, all right? Uh, fortunately, I don't have any body piercings to show you. The only thing I have pierced are my ears. Never pierced anything else. Uh, all right. Uh, number 67, but you can't imagine the horror. Well, not that bad, right? I mean, it'll just rip. Before I say that, let me tell you what I'm talking about. I am imagining in my mind a person going into an MRI room, into an MRI machine with a piercing. So, I mean, I mean, I don't think it'll be that bad, right? I mean, it'll be like the same thing. Like, I've seen people get in, fa in fights with piercings and then they just get ripped out. I think it'll be the same thing, you know? But still, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Uh... But who knows, right? Because, I mean, with a punch, like, just like he pulls on the thing, but the magnet will pull on the Who knows? But I'll probably have to look that up. I don't know why I want to look that up, um, but I will. <laughs> I'm never think I'm all gory and stuff. Huh? Uh, no, it's just I'm, I'm very curious. Uh, so number 67, tattoo, tatuaje. Uh, well... Duh, that's a tattoo. Uh, so this is a mark, a person or a part of the body with an indelible, indelible means it's very hard to remove or cannot be removed, with an indelible design by inserting pigment into punctures in the skin. So yes, that is it. There's punctures in the skin with ink and they just poke it in there and then they leave it in there. And I am thinking that the reason why they ask about tattoos is because some tattoo ink has metal in it. I think the glow-in-the-dark one, if I am not mistaken, or some glow-in-the-dark ones have metal in it. Or some tattoo inks have metal in it, and that's why they don't want you getting into the MRI machine. I mean, can you imagine? It's like... <laughs> the MRI machine has a new tattoo. <laughs> Instant tattoo. Uh... But yeah, for the most part, most tattoos are MRI safe. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure they are. I heard it from nurses and stuff. And they do ask if they know that if their tattoo ink has metal in it because obvious reasons, right? Uh, number 68 is very similar to tattoos. This is permanent makeup and this is maquillaje permanente. So permanent makeup is a cosmetic technique which employs tattoos, permanent pigmentation of the dermis as a means of producing, designing, and other permanent enhancing colors to the skin and of the face, lips, and eyelids. It is also used to produce artificial eyebrows, particularly in people who have lost them as a consequence of old age disease such as alopecia totalis, I've never heard of that, chemotherapy or a genetic disturbance as to disguise scars and white spots on the skin such as vitiligo, did I say that right? Vit vitiligo, yes. Uh, for some reason I think I always say that word wrong. It is also used to restore, and I, I vitiligo, it's probably vitiligo or something like that, I think I'm saying it wrong. Uh, it is also used to restore or enhance the breast areola, such as after breast surgery. So, okay, uh, so it's just tattoos up here or like right here, right? So that a woman or a man can wake up beautiful and they have less makeup to do in the morning, right? They wake up with a full face of makeup all pretty and stuff like movie actresses and stuff you know they always have like their very beautiful makeup on and they're combed when they get out of bed like yeah okay uh number 69 69 you naughty naughty people all right uh wig and this is a peluca so what is a wig? It is a cover, a covering for the head made of real or artificial hair typically worn by people for adornment or by people trying to conceal their baldness 
or in England by judges and barristers in courts of law. All right, so let's just imagine if I didn't like my bald head, if I wanted something here, well, what can I do? I can buy a wig, right? And then I could put it up here and then I'll probably have an afro or something or some dreads, right? Some, um, what are they called? Dreadlocks. Uh, uh, are they dreadlocks? No, dreadlocks are up here, right? I forgot, what is it called in Spanish? Rast in English, rastas, uh, like the hair for the, like the Rastafaris use, you know, the Jamaicans, those puffy, like look like Cheetos, Cheeto hair. I forgot what it's called, what's it called? Oh, wow, why did I forget how it's called? And I know in Spanish, Rastas. Let's look it up in English real quick. I don't wanna make this video be talking about a Rasta wig, like Rasta. And of course, I couldn't find dreadlocks. Dreadlocks. So, and what do you call cornrows? Yeah, I was confusing dreadlocks with cornrows. Yes, dreadlocks, definitely. I'll get me a wig full of dreadlocks, right? Or a very wild uh, looking, like, looking wig, right? Uh, something very eccentric, right? If you're gonna buy a wig, you might as well buy the craziest wig you can find. All right, and number seven is hair implants and I forgot to put the Spanish translation but don't worry I got it Im implantes de cabello so this is a surgical procedure that involves the insertion of human hair or synthetic fiber into the scalp to cover baldness so if I didn't feel comfortable with my baldness I would have probably paid like 32,000 Mexican pesos. Uh, <laughs> how do I know that, right? Uh, I don't know how I know that. Uh, at one point, there was like a lot of commercials about that. I don't know why. I must have been looking about something or Google might have heard me talking about my baldness or something because there were a lot of ads. I remember that. And I actually clicked on a few of them to see what it was like. So they actually take hair from up back here and then they just put it in here and then they give you a whole set of new hair and it's wonderful it's awesome uh, for anyone that has baldness and wants to get rid of their baldness for me I love shaving my head I love not using shampoo I love uh, you know what I don't love I don't love the cold on my head that's the only thing I don't like about being bald um, because at, when, in winter time, I have to sleep with a hoodie and uh, not with, yeah, with a hoodie, but with a, with a little beanie and sometimes I cover my whole face. Uh, so yeah, that's one of the drawbacks of being bald, but everything else is lovely. I don't spend money on shampoo or anything. The only draw, so, the only bad thing is like, I gotta shave like every two days if I gotta keep a nice bald head. But other than that, I love my baldness uh all right so we have reached the end congratulations guys if you made it to the end you are now proficient in mri questionnaires and i wish you the best of luck when you do it and i hope that you never forget any of these definitions give yourself a round of applause please and give me one too because that was drooling man that was hard I had nightmares about the MRI questionnaire all right so that's gonna be it for me today guys please leave your questions in the comments and I will answer some of them on the next session remember that if anything is time sensitive let me know and I will get to the video before the rest of my queue remember that I'll be here every Monday through Friday after work rain hail sleet snow rain hail sleet snow right I'll be here and uh yeah remember that we love all of our patreons we love you guys we love everyone that has bought us a coffee we love all of our subscribers we love all of our viewers and we love you that is watching the end of this video so thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe if you like the video and have not done so for much more content and don't forget to share happy interpreting
Goodbye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Unwind Sessions. Make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. And if you learned something new today, it'd be great if you left us a review. You can also visit us on patreon.com slash interpret your world or visit our website, interpretyourworld.com. Unwind Sessions. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button. Also, share this video with other beginner interpreters or anyone who can benefit from this information. Thank you all so much for all the support you guys have given us. This means the world to us. Don't forget, we also have social media. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. We also have an Instagram and the one I love the most, TikTok. We just recently got a buying a coffee and also, if you guys didn't already know, we do have a Patreon account. If you guys would like to support us a little more, we'd love to have you guys over there. And as always, I will be posting all the links to these pages down below in the description box. Thanks for watching!